In this video, I cover six SaaS ideas to build right now before someone else does. Stick around until the end, where I talk about several places you can go to find almost endless inspiration for new software product ideas. I'm Rob Walling. I'm a startup founder with multiple exits, the author of three books about building startups, and an investor in more than 100 companies. Before we dive into any of the ideas, I wanna remind you that just coming up with a SaaS idea and going and building it is usually not the right process. Usually you go out and find people that want this and are willing to pay for it. You try to pre-validate it through conversations, but lists of ideas are interesting and they are fun to hear. And these are ideas that I have seen needed in the wild, whether by my own companies or companies in the tiny seed and the microconf ecosystem. But I would caution you against rushing into your basement and, and spending six months building this, thinking that it's pre-validated because they aren't. So with that, let's dive into idea number one, podcast workflow management. I'm the host of three podcasts. And what we found is that we were always duct taping things with bailing wire and using Google Docs with sometimes Dropbox. Then we moved to Notion. We had Trello for a while. And these days we have built basically a completely custom solution inside Airtable. It's a no code solution. So Airtable plus Dropbox. And then I actually have questions that come in through video ask into a Trello board. So we literally have still have four tools and some emails going around to produce our podcast. Brilliant SaaS founder out there could come into this space, which at this point is a pretty hot space, but I haven't seen anything for podcast production project management. And I'd imagine there is a founder out there who could have a vision for this, right? And bring this all under one umbrella and make the process more efficient. Idea number two is an applicant tracking and rating system specifically focused on either startup accelerators or accelerators plus universities. And you could tack on some other niches beyond that. I run a startup accelerator called Tiny Seed. It's for bootstrap SaaS founders. And we have tried out two different systems for our applicant tracking because we get several hundred applicants whenever we do a batch opening. We want to go in, we want to rate them, and then we have conversations with them. We choose some to make offers. We have to reject others. And there are systems out there that do this. Systems like Submittable is one example. And there are several others that we've looked at. And what we found is between the, the poor UX, the bugginess, and the inability to filter and you know run reports the way we need has really made it so we have to do a lot of exporting to Excel in order to do the work we want. And the pace of product development on these products just doesn't appear to be that great. But I think someone who could build a tool like this with good UX and still keep it relatively expensive, this is not a cheap space. It's not a cheap tool to purchase. I think someone could come in and have decent success in the space. Idea number three is pricing pages as a service. So this is probably more of a micro SaaS idea, but you can imagine how many SaaS founders or any type of startup founders are building pricing pages then are never split testing them and have to wire up all the Stripe code and take so many more steps to get a pricing page in line. And you and I both know that there are best practices, tools like this, pricing grids for WordPress, pricing grids for other ecosystems, but I have not seen one that is a SaaS built for SaaS companies. And so you would basically hook it in to their Stripe account and everything else would be done for them. The danger of course, is that someday Stripe builds this themselves, but that's why I was saying it's a micro SaaS because there is platform risk, but I still think it's an intriguing idea. Idea number four is Zapier for X, where X is a niche that is not currently being integrated into Zapier. So think of going deep into medical or legal or construction or architecture and engineering, interior design. There are all these niches where those tools are not connected via Zapier. And I'm intrigued by the idea of going into these niches and figuring out how to connect these tools in a basically a no code way, in a way that hasn't been done today. Because Zapier, if you think about it, it is a general tool. It has a lot of, of marketing technology and they have hundreds and hundreds of integrations, but they don't go deep into these niches because there probably wouldn't be enough usage to justify an you know doing an integration. So in your shoes, if I had expertise in a particular space, I would consider, is there a need for Zapier for X. Idea number four is essentially a competitor to Intercom and Drift. So it's chat plus support, plus probably some other stuff. The reason this comes up is because I don't know how many SaaS companies that I talk to, especially early stage startups, that are frustrated with these tools. These tools now have tended to move up market as they do. They sell at high price points and they sell to enterprises. And I believe that there is quite a bit of room in the bottom of this market. And it doesn't mean you have to be super cheap. Infusionsoft was charging four and $500 a month. I built a startup called Drift that competed with them. 
them. Didn't mean I had to char have to charge $10 a month, but there was definitely room in that $50 to $300 range for us to undercut them on price while we built a brand. And I know that there are a lot of folks that are unhappy with intercom due to price increases. And I think there's room in this space. This would not be micro SaaS and it would probably not be the first SaaS I built because it's gonna be extremely competitive. But if you've stair-stepped your way up and you're ready to get into a competitive large space that's a proven market, I would consider this idea. And the sixth SaaS idea is an investor update and reporting dashboard. The reason this comes up is because there are a lot of venture funds and accelerators that raise a bucket of money from investors and then they invest them into startups. And they have to do two things. They have to get monthly updates from those startups and then they have to provide consolidated updates about fund performance or about things that are happening with the fund and, and the companies in these batches. Then they have to report to the investors on fund performance, asks from those companies. You know, there's just a lot of stuff. So there's a few jobs to be done with this. You wanna be able to get updates from the startups that you've invested in, from your portfolio companies, and you wanna have a dashboard that your investors could log into, and then even a way to send monthly investor updates. But as far as I know, there is no tool that does this. And when I have talked to other venture investors and accelerators, everyone's building their own custom thing or cobbling it together. And now I want to dive into a couple places you can go to find almost endless inspiration for new SaaS ideas. The first is anytime you see a business using Excel to solve a problem in an ongoing fashion, it's probably an opportunity for a SaaS application. The second is no code, just the no code space in general. I think that there, there's so many tools being built in that space and there's so much potential. But if you are a no code expert, can become a no code expert or can talk to no code experts and find out where the edges are and where things are you know, falling off or need extra tooling, I think there's a lot of opportunity in that space. And the third and final is to look at B2B SaaS marketplaces, figure out some tools that have been built into these marketplaces that are not already in other marketplaces. So we're gonna link in the show notes an article that has 68 B2B to be SaaS marketplaces with opportunities for indie hackers. If you have expertise in one of these areas, or you just want to open all the marketing marketplaces and figure out where are the opportunities here, like sift through them and be, oh, this is a great idea. And that appears to be doing well. It has a lot of ratings. Does that app that's in the Shopify app store also exist over here in the WooCommerce app store? Or is that app in the MailChimp app store also available in this other you know competitor of MailChimp app store? And so this approach is definitely more like building step one of the stair-step approach, right? It's building that small first app to get to the point where you have financial freedom such that you can focus on bigger ideas. But I'm a big believer in these SaaS app stores, these marketplaces. And even though there's platform risk, they take so much of the headache away from you as the founder in the early days that I believe it's valuable to look at them as opportunities. If you enjoyed this video, I'd love it if you'd hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. We have videos coming out like this every week. Hope you enjoyed those SaaS ideas. I'll see you in the next video.